Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to talk about repos. The dreaded, not the repo man, but the bracket repo process. We hate bracket repos. They're the worst, right? Um, why do we have bracket repositioning? Or why do we need to re reposition brackets? Well, because we didn't put them on right to begin with. So it happens, you know, like if you're direct bonding or freehanding, even happens to orthodontists. Um, sometimes we don't put them on quite right. Sometimes the patient's moving around. Sometimes it's tricky with a mirror and a small mouth and the lighting. And sometimes our assistant bumps it when they light cure it. So it happens, right? Sometimes we move a tooth and when we're looking at it, we're like, uh, I want to make this cone go down a little bit more. But if you have to do bracket reposition, of course, I'm going to do my little soapbox here. If you use indirect bonding, and if you verify your placement of the indirect bonding of the brackets digitally, you shouldn't really have bracket repos, or if anything, it's a one-off, right? Or sometimes you do IDB, and then the patient knocks a bracket off, and you have to freehand it, direct bond it to put it back on, you don't quite do it right, right? Um, so usually what I recommend with my doctors is they take the case, you know, through their normal wire sequence, which difference differs on every patient. Sometimes I'm going to start with a 14, sometimes I'm going to start with a 16 night tie, sometimes I'm going to start with an 18 night tie, um, if they're not that crowded and work your way up to the point where the wire is no longer deflective, where the wire is passive. And then at the 18 night tie stage might take six months to get there, might take two months to get there, might take a year to get there. Um, at that stage, you stop, once it's not deflected anymore, you pause, and I recommend to my doctors that I work with that they take some time to take a series of photos as well as a progress panel is strongly recommended, especially if you have some questions. Um, and progress panels, just to remind you, are standard of care every year when your patient is in orthodontics. It doesn't mean that people are checking to see if you've done it. But if and when there was a problem or if you had long treatment time and you didn't do this, you might get in trouble, <laughs> especially if there was pathology or root resorption or something like that. So that's why. But I like to take progress panels at this stage, at the 18 night tide passive stage, just to verify if I'm doing repose that I'm doing them correctly, right? Especially if I'm not sure. So let's talk about taking bracket repositioning photos. So this isn't quite right here, but... Um, Bracket repositioning photos are a little bit similar to aligner check-in tracking photos in that it's not going to necessarily be like your initial series of photos, which is what I've got here, you know, your upper, your lower, your right biting, your left biting, your um, front biting. These are fine and you should still take these, you know, as a, as a progress. But for bracket repositioning, and I don't quite have the right photos here, so I apologize, but I didn't have releases on the ones I wanted to show but slightly open versions of this slightly open version of this slightly open version of this slightly open version of this as well as perhaps a few more slightly open versions from a different angle like right here aiming towards the canines you know like almost a 45 degree angle right here aiming towards the the canines 45 degree angle so ideally for bracket repositioning photos just to recap i want the regular ortho series not the extra oral the intra oral you know that you've got boom, 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 or boom, 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 as well as five additional photos, all slightly open, okay? This one, this one slightly open, this one slightly open, as well as two more aiming towards the canines coming in at a 45 degree angle. So that would be a total of 10 photos, at least for bracket repositions. And you need to use retractors and they can't be blurry and they can't be dark and they can't be foggy. We need the best, and they can't be thumbnails. They need to be high resolution photos because the way I do this with my doctors is I have them upload their bracket repositioning photos into our secure mail, which is a HIPAA compliant way that we communicate. I blow them up super giant on one of my big screens, really, really big, and I get really picky looking at the brackets. And then I mark them up and I give suggestions on how to move the bracket, like move it 10 degrees clockwise, you know, approximately, I'm just estimating, you know, move it half millimeter gingival. Um, and that really helps doctors realize what they've done and what they can change and how they can improve their brackets. So, and, but anyways, remember that bracketing is not just a science, it's also an art. So the way I do it might be different from the way another orthodontist does it. And it's not that it's right or wrong, it's just different. So it's whatever works better in your hands, whatever you think looks good. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Thank you.